Hello. So once you can see me, go ahead and just put a little, I can see you in the chat. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I made it. You did. Yay. Am I showing up? Well, I can see your, your voice is on and I can see your name, but your video is off. Oh, so you can click your, um, Oh, I see. Yeah. Cool. I think. And then do you want to just tell me, just give me a, you can see the whole mat and everything over there. Does that mm -hmm. work? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. I'm not sure who else is going to join. So we'll just give it another moment or so, but you can go ahead and lie down on your backs. Just remember, I got my dogs. So, <laughs> so just like your kitties. I had to lock them out because I knew they would drive me crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, my guys are uh, set up. <laughs> but you can go ahead and lie down on your mat. It's like, I need to let people in. Great. My mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> so we're going to start lying down. Great. There. Everyone should be able to pop in now. Just so you know, I, I'm having some funky communication with Zoom, so we should be able to go for the full hour. However, it might shut off, off at 40 minutes like I did yesterday. Okay. Crystal, you'll be aware of that. And what we did last time was I just had everyone sign back in, so hopefully it's not too disturbing. I'm going to keep a timer going just in case. And I'm, of course, multitasking, having people, just like happened to you, Tori, yesterday, of people trying to <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I tried so hard. So <laughs> did I shut my video off? Do you want me yeah, to? Go ahead and shut your video off. Okay. It, yeah, you see the button at the bottom. That'll make you feel way more comfortable. Okay. Cool. Wait a moment. So, Mom, you can t shut your put your mute button on. Tori, if you want to put your mute button on too. Sure. Cool. Awesome. I don't know what the mute button is. Um, I think I can do it. Actually, mom, here we go. I'm going to do it for you. Ha! Did it. Super. Yeah, so I'm gonna have you all start on your backs and just get nice and comfortable. Taking up as much space as you need to. Just answering one message. Hopefully, Chris can get in as well. And I know I don't have a lot of space, but maybe you have enough space where you can reach your arms above your head and take a nice big stretch, maybe point the toes. And if you don't have quite enough room, then reach the arms out to the side. Just take a nice morning stretch. And if it's more comfortable for you to have the knees bent, then go ahead and have your knees bent. Maybe windshield wiper the knees back and forth. And 
And so I'm not, I don't usually read things before class, but um, it's St. Patrick's Day, and Mom, you'll appreciate this. Dad gave me, my dad gave me this Thomas Burton Book of Hours, and so I picked up, and it's every day, and there's, the days are broken up into different hours, and there's meditations for each of the hours. And so for, day, for today, Tuesday day, as we're lying down on our backs, getting nice and comfortable. Life is not accomplishing some special work, but attaining to a degree of consciousness and inner freedom, which is beyond all works and attainments. That is my real goal. It implies becoming unknown and as nothing. Life is not accomplishing some special work, but attaining to a degree of consciousness and inner freedom, which is beyond all works and attainments. That is my real goal. It implies becoming unknown and as nothing. So I'll shift attention and awareness to the pattern of breath that's happening for you right now. Trying to feel that rise and fall in the belly. Noticing the sounds in the room around you. Allowing those sounds to just pop up, coming across the stream of consciousness and awareness. Slowly shifting that awareness back to the breath. So we're listening for the sound of the inhale, sound of the exhale. And go ahead and if it's available, you'll stretch the arms above the head. We're gonna to start to move into our half moon shape on the floor. If you'll stretch the arms above the head, maybe point and flex the feet again or wiggle the toes. And then go ahead and slide the feet off towards the right side of your mat. And if you've already moved to the left, that's fine. We're doing both sides, it doesn't matter. And then the upper body off towards the side as well. Notice if that left shoulder or the opposite shoulder wants to come up, see if you can roll it back down. So if you have to unwind yourself a little bit, that's okay. It's just a morning movement. And you may even have that left hip pop up. You could take the left hand to the hip and assist it back down. You can always do this with the knees bent as well if you're really finding that it's too much of a twist in the low back. So we'll just stay here for a moment, maybe look left and right. And let the low back settle. Let the features of the face settle. That's a great time to squinch up your face or make your weird movement, stick your tongue out, bug out your eyes, and then settle back down. Getting around the left side of the body, starting to feel a little bit of relaxation happening. So the side of the body is rolling back down towards the mat. If you've already crossed the left leg over the right, that's just fine. Just make sure that that left hip is still rolling back down towards the floor. Three or four more long deep breaths here. Then roll back to neutral. Bring the arms down to either side, the side waist. Take the legs as wide as they need to be. Maybe wiggle the tailbone or again, look, look left and right. Wiggle the shoulders. 
and fun, and even distribution of weight between both sides of the body as you're rela relaxing on the floor. So you might have some tingling sensations happening along the left side body. Once those start to calm down, go ahead and slide towards your second side, reaching the arms above the head, creating that half moon shape. Compression along the left side waist, elongation along the right side waist, and rolling on the head. If the arms or shoulders are feeling tight, take the arms as wide as you need to. Again, if that hip is popping up, maybe a little gentle pressure to encourage it back down. And crossing the right leg over the left if that feels more accessible. Feels like it gives you a little bit more space. Again, we'll stay for about five breaths. Using those exhales to soften the side waist. Using the inhales to find a little bit more space between each rib, a little bit more space between the hip point and the lowest rib. So we're in, in essentially pressing breath into that exposed side waist, trying to stretch out the lung. Two more inhales and exhales. And again, deep inhale and exhale. Slowly make your way back to that neutral body. Arms at either side of the sideways, let the feet just flop apart. Feels better to have the hands on the tummy, that's great. And we'll just let the body start to settle in, nice and heavy. We're gonna be shifting to a happy baby from here. Sliding the heels towards the hips. Go ahead and hug both knees into the chest. So some of you might have a strap with you and that's just great, or you can hold onto the backs of the thighs, flexing both feet up towards the ceiling. If that feels like it's too much, you can always just do one foot at a time, taking a lot of space by heel toeing the opposite leg off towards the opposite side of the mat. And as we start to press the back side of the body into the floor, you might find that you wanna grow a little bit taller by lifting up and coming back down or wiggling the hips. But this is less about compression of the thighs towards the body and more about finding space and allowing the tailbone, the low back to be flat on the floor. As so we did this yesterday morning, but we're gonna do it again. I like to do these diaphragmatic breaths. As we inhale, fill the belly. You'll feel the legs press away from me slightly and then exhale, try and drive the breath out of the body by hugging the knees a little bit more closely in. So inhale, belly rise, legs press away, exhale. Come in, it's a little bit of a pumping action. Inhale away, exhale in. <laughs> Four more breaths like that. Let's see if you can stretch the diaphragm with these inhales and exhales. Last one. We'll bring the feet back onto the floor. Feet can be nice and wide. And go ahead and windshield wiper the knees back and forth, releasing the low back. So you could, if you wanted to, just let both knees come off to the right for your twist, or you'll slide the heels in, hug the legs in, creating a tabletop position. Take a little bit deeper twist as we let both knees come off to one side. If that left shoulder is popping up, go ahead and reach the left arm above the head. And then maybe bring that arm back out again. You could even take the left hand to the low back to encourage a softening at the sacrum. And notice any tension that's come up in the face or the jaw. So if you can soften the jaw away from the skull, tongue heavy in the mouth. Two 
On your next inhale, either plant the feet and roll back to center, or use the core as you drive both legs back to their tabletop position, and switch sides. Reach the arm, take the arm out to the side. Just remember the two sides of the body function a little bit more, a little differently. You have different sensations on both sides, so maybe wanting to modify a little bit one side to the other. For me, the side waist is always a little bit more tense, so I'm going to take my hand and soften at the sacrum and then come back to using those diaphragmatic breaths. So the pressing of the breath into the belly helps to encourage the low back to have a little bit more space. And last one. We'll roll back to center. We're gonna hug both knees into the chest. Just do a little bit of core work here. Again, if you're more comfortable with the strap, go ahead and use the strap. Pressing the back side of the body tailbone flat, sacrum flat, reaching forward and back. Big inhale in your exhale. This time we're gonna lift the navel as you curl up, nose up to the knees. Inhale, roll down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, roll down. So you'll keep working this breath and movement together. Pressing all the breath out of the body as you exhale. Inhale, big breath in. And you'll notice that my shoulder blades are starting to press back down towards the floor. So rather than trying to curl the shoulder heads up, see if you can keep the collarbone nice and wide. And it's more of a lift from the chest. Going for 10, but if you don't quite make 10, that's perfectly fine. One or two more. And after this last one, we'll plant the left foot on the ground. Hug the right knee into the chest. And just switch sides. Left knee in, right foot down. Back to hugging both knees into the chest. We're going to press the soles of both feet up towards the ceiling. Again, hands at the backs of the legs, pressing the legs away. You can point and flex the feet. You can pedal the, through the knees until you have that sensation of extension. And you'll notice that the low back wants to come up. If it means that you're bending the knees to press the low back and knit the ribs together, lift the navel, that's fine. Press away. And we're gonna stay here for a moment. So getting used to the toes above the head. So the only contraindication here, the only time you wouldn't wanna do this is if the feet above the head is causing a little bit too much pressure in the face. If you already have some congestion happening, then you just bend the knees. And if you're starting to feel comfortable, the arms can come out to the side. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can reach the arms above the head, just as long as the spine, the whole back is pressing down into the floor. And we'll stay here, feeling the hips nice and heavy, upper body pressing down. You might get a little bit of a shake happening, that's okay. And move through the ankles. Maybe separate the feet slightly. We're gaining that sensation of heaviness, stability, connection to the ground. I'm gonna hold, hold this a little bit longer than we want to. So another five rounds of breath. Feeling the sensation of breath, I am inhaling. Feeling the sensation of breath, I am exhaling. I am inhaling. I am exhaling. Three more like that. And again, inhaling and exhale, let the feet come down. Maybe wanting to knock the knees together or windshield wiper back and forth. 
And then we'll move into hugging the knees back in and a little bit of cross crawl. <clears throat> this is really healthy for the brain, so I like to do it in all my classes. We're reaching and protracting the shoulders up and then opposite heel and foot come to the ground. And you'll again notice that the low back wants to pop up. We're working on pressing using the deep core stabilizers to press the back down. And trying to match the touch of the heel and the opposite thumb towards the ground. So go as slow or as quickly as you're comfortable with. And still see if you can maintain that protraction, the lift through the fingertips. Shoulder blades are down, but the shoulder heads are lifted. And in a moment, if you're not feeling it already, you'll feel the kind of deep core kicking in. And go for two more each side. And enough of that, we'll bring the feet down. Shaking the arms, can shake the legs. It's a little dead bug thing. Kind of shake, 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 shake. And then we're gonna roll all the way off to one side and move to your all fours, if you prefer along the spine. I like to place a blanket under my knees for all four stuff. So I'm gonna start with that. Then we're gonna talk about the grip on the hands a little bit for just a moment. So you really wanna grip with the fingertips down so much that the first knuckle is gonna lift. So big starfish grip. And then we're rotating about 45 degrees, and that's gonna keep a lot of the pressure off of the heel of the hand, which is what kind of starts to hurt lots of us as we start to put more weight onto the hands. A little dynamic cat cow here. So once you have your suction grip with the hands, we'll curl the toes under, and then actively try and draw the inner arches of the feet together as you inhale into your cow pose. And we'll have the shoulders travel slightly in front of the wrists and then flip the feet over, lift the navel and press back slightly. A little dynamic cat-cow, moving cat-cow. Inhale forward and exhale, press back. Inhale, flip the toes, lift the chest and exhale back. So it's really natural, just kind of want to hinge at the waist as you move through this. See if you can lead from the tailbone so it's more of an undulation in the spine. Three more rounds. So this linear movement. And then we'll slide the inner thighs to touch and you could scoot the knees back a little bit or the hands forward and we're gonna start to draw big circles with the hips in one direction. And rather than wanting the hips to kind of come forward in a compression in the low back, see if you can maintain kind of a length through the low back. As you just shift your weight forward and back, left and right, and switch directions. Back to your all fours, and if you're using that knee padding, you're gonna want the knee padding here. We're gonna curl the right toes under, flex the left heel, and lift the knee, trying to flex that heel towards the hip. And then start to draw big circles in one direction. Getting as much range of motion as you can, switch directions. And then the left knee down. Just pause for a minute, sway the hips left and right. And we'll do the same thing second side, left toes curl under, actively pressing into the arch, raise the right leg up, 
heel to the hip, and draw your big circles. Switch directions. Both knees down. From here, we're gonna keep the toes curled under and press back. So some of those are, are pretty comfortable with walking the hands back so that you're seated on tops of the heels. You could always place a block if you have a block or if you're just working on that foot flexibility, you'll press back. And if you're comfortable with sitting on tops of the heels, go ahead and do that. As we inhale, sweep the arms up and exhale down. Again, breath and movement matching. Inhale up, exhale down. Two more, inhale up, exhale down. Last one. And then we'll come on down back to our all fours. Flip the feet over, give the tops of the feet a little knock. From there, with the toes flipped over, you're gonna walk the hands back to the heels. And we'll work on opening up the front sides of the feet. So you can take your right hand to the right knee and draw the knee up towards the chest. And then just go ahead and switch sides. And if you're not getting this much movement in that ankle, that's perfectly fine. And if you're just getting a little, that's just fine. And I know some of us are working on the balance. So you know where you're going from here. We're lifting both knees up to the chest. And it's not <laughs> walking the, hip, the hands back. It's actually just a flexation, squeezing the inner thighs together and lifting. And the dogs are playing. Rolling back to our all fours. We'll step the right foot back, shift your weight back and forth. and pushing into the top of the left foot, raise the right leg up. Big inhale, exhale, curl in, knee to nose. Inhale, press back if you'd like to, opposite arm and leg, curl in. Pushing into the top of the left foot, inhale, extend. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Last one. And then we'll plant the left hand. Listen, you're going to step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. And big, draw big circles with the knee in one direction. Switch directions. And we're going to stay on this side by planting the left hand. If that's a little far and you have a block, use a block underneath the left hand. See if the knee is traveling over the ankle, and we're just going to sweep that right arm up for a twist. So you can look down and up to see that the shoulders are kind of tracking in one line. You can always tent the fingertips. Just remember we're still pushing into the top of the back foot. And we're gonna make some big circles with that left arm. And inhale, sweep up, and then exhale back. Inhale up, exhale back. Once more like that. And then exhale back, switching directions, inhale up. Kind of like you're painting the inside of a barrel. We wanna get rotation in the shoulder. Last one, and then we'll switch sides. So the hands come back down. We'll slide that right leg back, sweep the hips back and forth. Pushing into the top of the right foot, left foot steps back. Inhale up, exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to nose. Maybe extending out through that right arm. Curling in. Extension. Compression. Two more. Last one. And from here, we're stepping the left foot to the outside of the left hand, left hand to the left knee, big circles. 
And of course, the dogs are playing on their play mat. Switch directions. And we'll stay here moving into the twist. Press down into the right hand, lift up through the left arm. Look down and up a couple of times. Using your block or tenting the fingertips. Exhale. Sweep. Inhale. Lift. Exhale. Sweep. Inhale. Lift. Once more that direction. And then go ahead and switch directions. Framing or bringing the left hand to the inside of the left foot back to your all fours. Moving to our first downward facing dog, curl the toes under. Remember that grip we were talking about earlier. And lift the hips, downward facing dog. If downward facing dog is not your thing this morning, then you can stay on the knees and maybe just press the hips back slightly. So we're press, press, pressing. Wiggling the hips. And then melting the heart back towards the thighs. Trying to lift the sit bones as high as you can. If that means if the knees are generously bent, that's fine. And you can twist the low half of the body one way and the other. And then go ahead and create a forward fold somewhere on your mat. Once you're there, just let the upper body hang. <laughs> let the head be heavy. Maybe make some circles with the nose in one direction or look left and right. And then we'll heel toe the feet either just a little bit wider than the hips or right underneath the hips. And a good measurement for that is taking the hands together, making two fists. And let the upper body hang again. So we're gonna capture opposite hand into opposite elbow. Snuggling the palm of the hand into the elbow and getting nice and heavy. And if the knees need to bend, that's okay. What we're looking for is the crown of the head right in the middle of the forearms. So that as we soften through the knees and come up with a flat back, you have this great frame right around the face. We'll inhale here and then exhale, lift the hips forward fold. Inhale, soften through the knees, lift the chest, exhale, forward fold. This can be done either nice and slowly, so maybe you're just on your first or second one. Or you could go a little bit more quickly. Last one. And then as you're releasing, just be aware of which forearm has landed on top. Yeah. As you release, let the arms come down and shift your weight back and forth. We're gonna move our weight forward to the toes and back to the heels, left and right, until you have equal distribution between the two feet. And we're gonna repeat that same mo motion, except this time, see if you can, by feeling. Take the opposite forearm on top. Let the head be heavy. Maybe gaining a little bit more space between the vertebrae. And we'll soften through the knees. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lift the navel fold. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Three more. <laughs> Trying to maintain those upper arm bones at the ears. Last one. And release the hands. Walk yourself back to downward facing dog. And in your downward facing dog, wiggle the hips. 
Find that grip with the fingertips again. Lifting up through the sits bones, press yourself back. We're gonna deeply bend the right knee and reach the right leg up towards the sky. Tapping the right foot to the floor. Inhale, lift. Exhale, tap. Inhale, lift, allowing the left heel to soften. Once more. And then both feet down, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. If you need a break on the knees, go ahead and take it. I start just being really Second side, left foot raises. Deeply bend the left knee to raise that leg up. And five taps. Two, inhale up. Three, four, and five. From here, we'll all drop down onto the knees again, sliding forward to the kneecaps and release the chest to the floor. Make a little pillow for the forehead by stacking the hands. Wiggle the tailbone back and forth. Maybe bend the knees and draw some big circles of the feet in one direction and then the other. We'll re extend the legs. And if you have that blanket, maybe scooting it off to the side. We'll re extend the legs. And then take the arms out at a 45 degree angle. We'll tent the fingertips so that the elbows lift. Push into the tops of the feet and inhale, lift the chest. Getting a little bit of stretch through the low back, a little bit of stretch through the chest. Exhale, come down. Push into the tops of the feet, inhale, curl up. And exhale down. So you may be a little bit lower and that's just fine. We're gonna work on the breath, inhaling to buoy the chest forward and up, exhale down. Once more like that. And then as you come down, we'll slide the hands to either side of the side waist and press yourself up and back into your child's pose. Another great opportunity to wiggle through the hips. Let the forehead be heavy. Maybe rock back and forth on the forehead. On an inhale, slide back forward to your all fours. We're gonna put a little bit of this together. Step the right foot back and lift the right leg up. Bend the right knee, step the right foot to the inside of the right hand. This is gonna take a moment here Maybe heel toeing the foot off to the side. And then as you tuck the tailbone, sweep the arms up. So we'll tuck the tailbone back and forth till you can feel that 90 degree angle at both the knees, hips, and ankles. And then exhale, come forward, left hand down, spiral the right arm up, twist. Big inhale. And then exhale, keep lifting through the chest as you swing that right arm back up, back to your, up, uh, excuse me, Anjali Asana. Exhale down, left hand down, inhale, twist. Exhale, lift, two more like that. And twist, exhale, lift, last one, inhale, twist. Exhale. Uh, this time we're going to plant the hands. If you'd like to move to plank, go ahead or just slide the right knee underneath the right hip. Slide forward of the kneecaps and while squeezing the upper arm bones towards the chest, release the chest to the floor. Flipping the feet over, pushing heavily into the tops of the feet. Little back bend, inhale. Then listen here, we're going to press all the way back. Child's pose. Take an inhale and exhale here, really trying to breathe into the space between the two shoulder blades. And we'll start again on the second side. 
Inhaling yourself up. All fours, pushing to the top of the right foot, left foot lifts. Step the left foot forward and through. Take your time. Find the right distribution of weight. Find the right spacing. Inhale up. Exhale. Left hand down. Twist. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale. Twist. Inhale. Still pushing into the top of the right foot, rotating from the low, uh, excuse me, from the upper portion of the body, low half of the body, nice and stable. Last one. And twist. We'll frame the front foot, slide that left knee underneath the left hip. Again, if you prefer a plank, go ahead and find the plank and release yourself to the floor. Flipping the feet over, shoulder heads roll away. Inhale up to your back bend and press yourself back. Child's pose. Two breaths here. Find that reach of the arms need to separate a little bit for more space for the shoulders. Go ahead and use that. And we'll shift our weight back forward, planting the hands, curling the toes under. Downward facing dog. Pedal the feet. And now we'll create a forward fold towards the front of the mat. So you don't have to be all the way there, but pretty close. So we've hit about the, um, you can have a forward fold. We've hit about the 40 minute mark. We'll see if it kicks us out or if we can keep going. <laughs> Again, if it kicks you out, then, um, you can sign right back in. So go ahead and upper body hanging. And then we'll hug those opposite arms again. And inhale, lift up into this chair pose with the head framed. Feel the shoulders slide up. Heavily weighting the heels. Big inhale. Exhale, forward fold. We'll switch which arm is on top. Inhale, lift. Pausing for a moment to really sit the sits bones back. Reach, reach, reach. Exhale, fold. This time we're gonna slide the hands up the fronts of the legs. Thumbs capture the hip creases. Press the hips down and away. And then reach both arms out in front. Lift the chest, we're in our chair pose. Now I see that the low back is kind of curving, so if you can tuck the tailbone slightly, and that may even mean physically like I just did, sweeping a hand back to feel that elongation and reaching. And from here, just press yourself up to stand. Big inhale, reach the arms up, and exhale. Arms down, maybe make some circles at the nose, shake the arms, roll through the neck, shoulders, maybe even shake the legs. So from the top of the mat, we'll put this into a little sun series. Inhale, reach the arms up. Pause here, press firmly down into the feet, tuck the tailbone, and see if you can grow a little bit taller. Another big inhale, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale. Halfway lift, creating that flat back, that same sensation of reaching the sits bones back, and fold. We'll step the right foot way back and drop the right knee down. Flip the right foot over and inhale up to our low lunge. Lifting the navel, exhale, come forward, plant the right hand, spiral the left arm up for our twist. Inhale. Back up to your low lunge. And then from here, exhale, fold, plant the hands. Again, either a plank or to the knees. Remembering to activate through the inner thighs and to the floor. Back bend. And from here to the knees or through plank, downward facing dog. Can wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Find that grip in the fingertips if you've lost it a little bit and press the hips up and away. 
We'll stay here for three breaths. And if you need to come onto the knees, that's fine. See if you can use that diaphragmatic breath, the inhale, pressing the belly, filling up, and then exhale, really lift through the navel, trying to get all the breath out of the body. Two more like that, inhale, fill, exhale. Inhale, fill, exhale, lift. Traveling the feet to the hands. If you're into a little hop, go ahead and hop or walk. Once the feet and hands are towards one another, steady the feet, inhale, halfway lift. And just remember the chin is tucked slightly, so it's one long line from the tailbone through the spine, out through the crown of the head. Folding with firm legs, inhale, sweep the arms up, and we're gonna go right back down, exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Fold left foot steps way back, left knee down. Inhale, low lunge, shoulders sliding up, exhale, left arm down, twist. Inhale, back up. Exhale, frame. Step back to plank or to the knees. Find your way to the floor. Create your back bend. Press back to the knees. Toes curl under. Downward facing dog for our three diaphragmatic breaths. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, press the breath out. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale the breath out. Again, inhale, fill the belly. Exhale everything out. And travel the feet to the hands, forward fold, top air mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Firm legs, pressing the floor away as you rise, sweep the arms up. And then just let the arms come down. So from the top of the mat, we'll just step the right foot back and start to roll on top of the toes. This can already feel like a little bit of a balance. Switch directions. And then just switch sides. So maybe three or four rolls in one direction and then three or four rolls in the other direction. Feet back together, and we'll wiggle the arms, make some circles with the nose. And go ahead and sit back into your chair pose. So you could use that assistance of pressing the hips back and reaching the arms out in front. We're getting a little bit more heat before we get onto the ground. Again. Working the hips back, and that can be enough for you, or you might want to move into a twist here, bringing the hands to prayer. And you can always snuggle the left elbow, or the right elbow, excuse me, into the space between the knees, and then squeeze that elbow as you twist. If you're finding that when you go to the outside of the leg, that one knee really wants to pop in front of the other one. So this is a great modification. And really, if you're working on that full extension through the spine. And this might be enough. Or you can heavily weight one, uh, let's see, our left foot. So the direction in which you're twisting, you'd heavily weight that foot. And then float the opposite leg up. So just play with that for a moment. And if you need a break from twisting, go ahead and forward fold. Another inhale and exhale, wherever you are. And then we'll all forward fold. Let the head hang, wiggle the hips. Create your chair pose again. Second side. So if you started on the opposite side, that's fine. Maybe play with snuggling the elbow between the knees as you twist. Tucking the chin, reaching through the crown of the head. Maybe playing with the little balance. Two more breaths, wherever you are. And then we'll all forward fold again. 
from our forward fold. Walk yourself back out to downward facing dog. Dropping down onto the knees. Walk the hips back to the heels and go ahead and swing the legs around. Wiggle, 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 shake, shake, shake. Shake the arms. And then we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, knees in part, moving into a forward fold. Another great chance if you have your blocks, to use your blocks in your forward fold. If you have a blanket, you could utilize the blanket as well, bringing it underneath just for a little bit of support. But reach the chest forward and let the head hang. We're using the weight of the upper body to open up the legs and the back side of the body. So the more that you can release the shoulders, the jaw, the neck. And here we start to cool a little bit. Come back to that sensation of the breath traveling in through the nose and out through the nose. Coming back to the awareness of the breath traveling through the body. Getting a little bit heavier. Noticing the jaw coming away from the skull. Maybe the eyes are closed or softening. Tongue getting a little bit heavier in the mouth. So if the tongue is still stuck to the roof of the mouth, see if you can unstick it. And we'll stay here for another four, four rounds of breath. If you're up a little bit higher, now's a great time to maybe capture the forehead, bending the elbows, or if the elbows are on the mat or floor. Two more conscious inhales and exhales. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Then we'll walk the hands back, assist the knees closed, and sometimes, so we'll move props if there's props. Sometimes I like to do a little low back adjustment by holding onto the backs of the thighs and just kind of curling back and wiggling. And then from here, we'll extend the right leg out. And you may want to stay here just by hugging the left knee in or step that foot across the body, continue to hug in. And then we'll take a little twist. So if you're noticing that that left hip is really coming off of the floor, we can use that tool again like we had in our halfway lift. Some presses into the hip crease and encourages both hips down, evenly distributing weight back onto the floor, evenly distributing between the two sits bones. And it's perfectly fine to really twist the upper body, but it's not completely necessary. With the shoulder blades down. Inhale, lift, finding a little bit more length in the spine. Exhale, let the sits bones be a little bit heavier. One more, inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. And back to center, unlace the legs, wiggle, 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 shake, 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 second side. That extended leg should have a little bit of action, a little activity of pressing forward, but it does not need to be completely engaged because we want to help the back of the leg open by softening the thigh. That hip point, maybe pressing down as you twist. 
feeling even distribution of weight between the two sits bones. Opening across the collarbones, nice and tall. Last inhale and exhale, wringing everything out. Back to center, unlace the legs, wiggle and shake, and then start to make your way onto your back. So now's a great time if you have the blanket and you wanna put it over your feet, if you wanted to put something over your eyes. As you slide down onto your back, maybe a little wind shield wiper of the feet again. And if it's more comfortable for you to have the feet planted, that's just fine. Or legs extend. And start to feel the weight of the body drop down. So very heavy in the back of the head. And you could look left and right. Sometimes I even actively pick up the skull and place it back down so the chin is slightly tucked. And I'm on that knobby occipital bone on the back of the skull. Roll the shoulders up, so maybe even a lift, <clears throat> excuse me, a lift and adjustment. If the legs need to be wider, go ahead and let them be wider so that you are feeling stable and balanced. I like to drop the image of being more like water, or as water fills the space around it. So being a little bit more like water taking up as much room as you need to. And then I'll start to draw a current of energy from the tailbone in the back side of the body as you inhale, breathing up through the spine to the crown of the head, and exhale out the front side, down the chest, back out through the tailbone, along the front side of the body, inhaling, lifting up through the back side of the body to the crown of the head and exhale back down. We're creating a samaruchi, an equal breathing, maybe even counting the breath, inhale, one, two, three, four, crown of the head, exhale out, one, two, three, four. Inhaling, crown of the head, exhale, down the front side of the body. Staying with this visualization and pattern of breath. Staying with the awareness on the body and the breath. Allowing sounds to pop up in the soundscape. Not any need to identify them, just let them be. Returning to that sensation, inhale up, exhale down. Another two rounds, just like that. And then release the counting, releasing the visualization and just notice how the breath naturally comes back to its own cadence. start to bring a little bit more movement and awareness to the fingertips. So you could wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Toes, ankles, maybe look left and right. Whatever wakening motions are best for you. 
until maybe a full body stretch, reach, reach, reach. And then we'll all meet together, seated. Once you're up, roll the shoulders down and away a couple of times, maybe a twist. And we'll take the hands together, vigorously rub the palms, generating quite a bit of heat. Again, we're going to keep the hands off of the face as much as possible. So with these hot little hands, you're just going to hover them in front of the eyes so you can feel that heat coming off of the palms, warming the eyes. And then slide the hands together at heart center. Deep inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Thanking yourself for taking the time out of your morning to come to a little practice. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. And so you're more than welcome to stay here, lie back down, of course. And then if you wanted to, you could write a little something in the chat or just message me later. Thank you all. Have a great Patrick's Day. Hello? Hi. Hey. <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, here, wait, let me put that back on. Hi. <laughs> hey. Let me see if I can get. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, it's good to see you again. I know, it's good to see you too. Sorry, I had trouble yesterday. Well, yeah, and then Chris, you know, you remember Chris, Sal? Yeah. Yeah, she was the one that was messaging me, trying to get me to um, figure out how to let her in, and I was like, I, uh, yeah. Right. No, I think it was my computer yesterday was kind of freaking out. Oh, really? I don't think it was, and I, it was asking me for like a password and that's so strange. Know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Sorry about the dogs. They were <laughs> oh, <it's> okay. <laughs> I was like to see them again. I <laughs> halfway through let my cats in because they were scratching at the door. Yes. Yeah, they were um like hardcore wrestling at one point. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. That's okay. like, guys, come on. But that's what they're used to doing back here when I'm practicing. Yeah. Um, so are you, com are you homebound or what are your, what's your? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we don't have school. They, well, you know, they shut down all of our schools. Yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to stay home yeah. as much as possible. Cause yeah. just wait till it blows over and see. It's okay. so weird. It, I feel like we're living in like a dystopian novel or something. Oh, totally. Absolutely. It's so strange. I actually, I had talked to Tina yesterday. Oh, you just, just that's so funny. I messaged her yesterday. So you did? Yes. Weird. I know. <laughs> the dream team. Yeah. I just wanted to check in on her and she yeah. said that I should anticipate probably being out longer than two weeks because yeah. they've been out and they don't know if they're going back. That's what, yeah, that's what she said. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So we're, um, yeah. I talked to uh, Sienna yesterday about all that, like trying to do this distance stuff. And I was like, well, I'm for a spark. And I was like, well, I'm going to do my lesson plans. I'm going to write all my lesson plans. I'm going to do yeah. the work that needs to be. And then I'm going to do a couple of YouTube videos to have, because, you know, it's like my income. I know. <laughs> so if they do go back to school. Right. But anyway it is it's kind of scary we have had no instruction like my administration is really good about communicating with our staff yeah since 
Sunday, we haven't really heard anything instruction wise on like what we're supposed to be doing really to teach our kids. Like, I think they're just waiting to figure out something yeah. that makes sense for kids who don't have access to a device. Yeah. But my, most of my students are on Google Classroom, so I've already communicated with them through Classroom, and yeah. it kind of, like, lifted my spirits a bit, because they're like, we miss you, like, we'll wait to see what we need to do. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm super prepared. I was prepared, like, last week with a packet to send home with them. Yeah. And then they canceled on Sunday, so I didn't get a chance to give it to them. <laughs> oh, no. Because okay. I didn't want to give it to them Friday and, like, to have them thinking that school was going to be canceled for sure. And yeah totally we'll see oh yeah just playing it by ear oh yeah. i know it's just the worst is the uh <clears throat> like feeling stuck like i feel completely my <laughs> i have a schedule written down i have like i have a whiteboard with my schedule i have like all these to-do lists and i was like that was one that was day one yeah <laughs> you know, like, i know me too. Uh, I like to be home and I like to be alone, but not when I feel stuck. Totally. And I like my students are like the driving force and keeping me going. And yeah. I'm like, I'm forced to not to see them. Like it's different when it's a break. Right. But when it's Christmas or summer and I'm busy, right. but when I'm forced to not see them every day, I'm like, yeah. oh my, what am I going to do? Oh, but I have lists. I'm like, I'm going to try to take it as time to I don't know, learn how to be alone, I guess. Well, do the, you know, Tori, those, um, those YouTube videos or like the Facebook live, or if you can Google classroom, it's, yeah. I know. And I can't, I can't touch you, <laughs> but, at right. least, <laughs> but at least it's something. Yeah, it is. And For I'd sure. love to see, I mean, you have such great creative ideas that I would, I'd be totally into watching Cool. So that would be really fun. Yeah, I might do that. I might do that. So, um, how, which kitties? Which kitties do you have? Well, this is Maya. She's the one who's like obsessively cuddly. Oh, yes. I, mean, I can't get away from her. And the other two are not in here right now. Sterling was in here for a minute. So you're, okay, so you have three. Yeah, Maya Sterling is a, my boy cat, and Luna is my oldest that I've had since college, and she's just right. like a big potato who doesn't move <laughs> but Maya is like obsessive she was like she saw the computer and was just sitting there watching you and it's like do not touch any buttons <laughs> and then I was trying to she was like all in my face oh gosh always buddy I know yeah that's these guys oh I know thank you for doing this I'm gonna shoot you some money on Venmo I get paid Friday so I might wait till then. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I appreciate the thought. Um, I'm going to have to go. Then okay. We're going to, I have this, like, I thought it would be cool to do a natural sculpture out at the park with some people, but they're like, how far are you supposed to stay away from people? I don't know. So I know. It's so weird. I mean, okay. yeah, I have no idea. They, they're, on the verge of shutting my gym down, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, and some That's of the trainers are pissed about it. And my trainer's like, they should have shut it down last week. So I'm glad that she's like on the same page as me. Cause yeah. I was like, I don't really want to go do these group workouts. Oh yeah. Not the group. Yeah. The group workout is totally. Yeah. We can go yeah. outside and maybe go like walk and do stuff outside. Yeah. That's what I mean. It seems like that makes sense. And then they're like, don't, in San Francisco, they were like, don't go outside. And I was like, but the part, anyway, I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was good to see you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do more of these. I'm going to do stuff, but, um, but you can always just like call me too. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye. Bye.